going to record the footage that we can show it to our team members. Um, This is how the content looks like. This is this is business course, and teaching teaching about strategic thinking. So these are the so they, they also are, they are also arranged like with me. They have short videos. This is micro learning. What you want to do in, over there? Micro learning. They're going to arrange everything to short videos, and at the end of the videos, they have a quiz. I can see that the quiz is not not so big. One quiz has only four questions in it, not so much. And then you go on to the next one. Let's let's start from the beginning. First of all, you have this uh, welcome video, and then it will just continue that. Strategic thinking is a valuable skill for everyone in an organization, but it becomes increasingly essential as you ascend the ladder. In fact, you likely won't be promoted and can't succeed as a leader without it. You stop being evaluated on whether you can implement a task or a project, and you start being asked to conceptualize it and make determinations about what's valuable for you, the company, and other employees to be spending their time on. That is a completely different skill set, yet no one formally teaches you how to do that. It's not like corporations offer a strategy school. You have to take the initiative to figure it out. That's why we're here today. I'm Dory Clark. I teach for Duke University's Fuqua School of Business, and I'm the author of Reinventing You and Stand Out. I write frequently for the Harvard Business Review and elsewhere about strategy, and I'm excited to share those insights with you. In this course, we'll start by really understanding what strategic thinking is, and how you can carve out time to do it. Along the way, we'll explore how to learn from the past and take into account the future when developing your strategy. And finally, I'll show you how to implement all this with your team. Being strategic and being perceived by others as being strategic matters for your career. So let's make it happen. Some people may feel their bosses don't want them to be strategic, that they're just hired to implement, and that being a strategic thinker is just as likely to get you punished. That may be true for some pathological bosses, but in almost every case, smart leaders in an organization, whether that's your boss or other leaders you can build relationships with, will value it if you identify ways to make organizational processes smarter and the way you spend your time more effective. Don't sell yourself short by not pursuing strategic thinking. It is essential to your advancement. There are no prerequisites for this course, aside from an open mind. Anyone can become a more strategic thinker, and you can and should practice that skill and flex those muscles on the job. Most people don't take the initiative, so when you do, and you show that your ideas are good and take into account the big picture, it marks you as a leader. If you have access to the exercise file for this course, you can download it now. There is a good reason for why you want to come to us instead of doing for someone else. With someone no, else. No, for myself. Ah, okay. If you know how to do it for yourself, and you know how to sell it for yourself, and you have the time, then you can do it by yourself. It's better because you don't need anyone. But most people, and a lot of people, you, you just ask your lecturers, okay? You give an instruction to them, I want all of you to come up with one Udemy course in one month's time. How many percent will put the course on Udemy? And how good will their course be on Udemy? Because people don't have the time to do it. People don't have the skills to do it. So if they don't have skills, how you can, how you can do it for us? They don't, you come to us with your courses. And what we will do is we will package your course so that it sells uh, on Udemy and on uh, whatever else platform that you want to put in. Because there is a way of presenting your course so that it can sell. Okay. Uh, look at the way this guy talks, for example. How many of your lectures will talk like this? Yeah, this is my, this is my concern. Uh, so we are going to, we need the course content from them. But we may either guide them to talk like this, 
or if they cannot be guided then we find someone else who can talk like this to the audience again you are dependent for some people definitely you will be dependent on some people at one point you don't have to be dependent on the same people all the time but as long as you are using people even if you are using taxi drivers you will still be dependent on a taxi driver no, for that the taxi driver he needs me he needs my application he gets money but this one he doesn't need me i don't get him money now no he can talk he can talk he but he doesn't have the content you have the lecturer so you bring the lecturer to him and he develop the content and then you pay him some money so that he can spend some time to do this work so he de- is dependent on you for the money he is dependent on you to bring the lecturer to him so everybody benefits each other we must look at it that way mm-hmm. instead of uh, who is using who okay we have to find people who have that sort of mentality where we want to come up together and share the benefits but if we find some people who only wants to see how can i use this person how can i use that person in the first place we should not be dealing with these kind of people the chemistry is not right because all my sense i need to do something automation no need to deal with the people no need to give headaches no need to enough headaches that is no not need to pay pay rule every month that is not uh, exactly true uh, i use grab for example a lot okay number one what's important is the taxi driver this is people there is still no automated cars at the moment okay and just like just now when i was trying to get a taxi the drivers don't want to come this is people but even grab is dependent on the people right now although they have their application to automate the process at the end of the line is still whether the person wants to take the passenger or doesn't want to take the passenger and this happens to me all the time i i ask for grab three taxis say they want to come but only one will eventually come the other two will come to my house look at the guard and say this is too much trouble for me i can say it yeah. after i'm i've waited for half an hour for them to come for example so they are even grab is not fully automated they are still dependent on the people yeah, sure. okay hey amir yeah. لسه عميل انا لسه في المكتب بخلص حاجه وارجع احول طيب ماشي انت في المول ولا مشيت؟ انا في المول طيب If you become the person who put things together it sounds like you um, you are dependent on everybody else you are just the person who put everything together but let's look at people who put everything together a good example is Singapore Singapore has nothing they don't have plantations they don't have natural resources they don't even have a market they are very small They used to have only 2 million citizens in Singapore. But they are the biggest trader in Southeast Asia. And they are very big in the world. Just by being the person who put things together. And in Malaysia now, uh, this has been going for a long time. We have fishermen who are very, very poor. Fishermen. And we have people like us here on the, uh, at the market, in the market who feel that fish is so expensive but the fisherman is very poor farmers are very poor but why why are the vegetables so expensive why is the fish so expensive it's the middle man who controls the whole thing okay. it's the same situation as grab grab does not have any taxi at all okay. but they control all the drivers by just being the middle man so it's how you can 
add value to the entire process. You have a lot of lecturers, but if you ask them, they cannot put uh, videos that can sell on Udemy. They may not even be able to come up with a video. After one month, they will talk here, talk there, talk here, talk there, and they will still not come up with a video. That will happen with maybe 50% of the people. And then the other 50% who produce, maybe only 10% can produce video that can sell, can speak like this guy. Maybe another 40% just mumble through words that cannot sell. So you have this ability and you mix all these things so that they become good for themselves. You take the flour, you take the oil, you take the butter, which by themselves does not produce good food. But when you put them together, you are the cook who turn this flour, everything to something good. And so, uh, it does not mean that because you are just the guy with nothing in the equation, you does not add value to the equation. But this is what these people are doing. This Udemy, for example, they don't have the courses. They just put Udemy there. But of all the people in the equation, Udemy is the one who's making the most money. More than the lecturers. Okay, so mm. why would you like to be like Udemy? Why you would like to be like Udemy? Well, if you have the capital, we can. It will take quite a bit of capital. So this is what Udemy has been successful with. They managed to find the capital. And then they managed to do all this uh, marketing and everything. Mm. If we can do that, we can. You have to find the, maybe not as much as capital as you have spent, maybe half of that capital. We don't know how much capital for it. We can find out. And we don't know what the cost for it. The cost for it is stable, it is only for marketing. No, from the capital, we know that's the cost. Because this is the capital that they need. No, we can, we would like to know an order what they will provide. Just for it, how? We don't know. You just put the they, they they just put the website there and you just put your video there. That's it. You don't have to worry about server, you don't have to worry about anything. No, I'm talking about what the them themselves. Uh huh. What is their cost? Oh, of course. From the capital you will know. If let's say for example they have spent twenty million, their cost is at least ten million. Why? We we don't we don't have to know that. If we want to do Udemy, we have a rough idea that Udemy spent ten million. Then when we want to set up our own server, that time, we will find out, get quotation from people. How much is your server? How much is your server? No, but all the new experience is only for the server? No, no, no. Of course, salary, office, advertising is a big one. Marketing and advertising is very big for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why we maybe don't want to do, don't want to do that with any. Because we have to tell people, marketing and advertising. The same thing. Yes. So now what we want to do is we want to follow other people who have made a small amount of money on Udemy rather than be like Udemy. So we don't have to put a lot of money at risk. Udemy has taken that risk. We just come up with the risk of coming out with a cost. Which is small risk compared to a big risk like Udemy. Then we put it on Udemy and we try to see whether it works or not. However, if you look at a lot of courses on Udemy, most of the instructors have their own website. They will teach a little bit on Udemy. Then when you come to the last lesson, what they'll do is they will invite you to have a look at my website. Yeah, this is also my concern. If we ask and we okay, we want to we do one course for us. Okay, it's just like this. Correct. But next course, they will go next. From that, they will go to the website and they will know the no, the website is our website. The the lecturer, at the end of the course, there is a website. This website is this lecturer's website. Oh, no. uh. The same. We bring one lecture. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, after he finish the course, uh-huh. and he earn some money, he will do his website. Next time, he don't come to you. No, the Udemy thing, we will do for him, not he do himself. So we have full control. Okay, this is just only for the first course. Okay. For if we use the same lecture for second course. Okay. Again, if the lecturer knows how to do his course, he can do by himself. Then he don't have to come to us. He can do by himself. the The problem is that this lecturer will not be able to do that. Okay. We are looking for lecturers who cannot do by themselves. 
If they can do by themselves, we don't have to talk to them. And if this lecturer cannot do his course by himself now, later also they cannot do. And a lot of people are very happy, you know, I've come up with the course content, I will give it to you. I don't want to do talking, I don't want to do anything else. You pay me a small sum of money, I'll be happy. Because I want to spend more time with my family. I want to do something that I want to do. All I have to do is just come up with some notes for you and I pass that to you. And a lot of people are actually happy doing that. Mm. Rather than to, to run their own businesses. Mm. 